One of the kind of strange fascinations I think about Ibsen is that this, this writer whose works are kind of second only to Shakespeare, I suppose now, in the way that people think about drama, um, wrote about and was fascinated by an extraordinarily provincial place, which was right off the mainstream. No great writer in history has been so dependent on his translators because Norwegian, they know Norwegian. There's a tiny number of people who speak the language. And so, of course, his work was translated simultaneously into lots of different languages. I don't think there's yet been invented the right word to describe what I've done and what lots of other writers do with foreign language plays, which is you sort of rewrite the play in English you're mindful of being faithful, but you're not wholly faithful. There, there needs to be a word, but I can't think of it. Uh, but it's somewhere between adaptation and version. I find that if I read too much about a play, I'll have a lot of different academic opinions in my head when I do the version. I think, oh, well, I must, must work on that theme and that theme. I, I much prefer to approach it with the kind of naivety. And I read the literal and work through it, and that's, that's what the playwright wrote, and that's what I want to work with. The way I make the versions of the plays is there's a small amount of consideration of what the writers are doing or living through or, or searching for, but it's mainly sifting through the language to find clues. So the work's linguistic when I make a version rather than historiographical. I want it to find its mess and its contradictions and its violence and sexuality, because I think Ibsen's rich in violence and sexuality. One of the things that I like about Simon's um, Doll's House, which I've never seen as vividly before, is that he really gets hold of the money. <laughs> it's really detailed and it's really focused and it's really right. <laughs> you really feel that this was about money. One of the reasons I was drawn to it was to play about debt. You know, I wrote it in 2011, 2012. It was produced in the four years after the collapse of the financial markets in 2008. Nora Helmer lives an apparently idyllic life with her husband Torvald Helmer and their children, but she borrowed money and has spent the last five years trying secretly to pay it back. At the end of the play, her husband finds out about the debt, is appalled. The, the loan shark, Krogstad, then rescinds the debt and says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'll forgive you, I'll let you off. This extraordinary acceleration from condemnation from the husband's point of view to a kind of celebration and forgiveness that she refuses. And she says, look, I'm not, I can't live with a man who's going to contain me like this. And she leaves. The danger is that it feels melodramatic, that you've got this extremely quick kind of like extremity of emotion. And writing the version, I thought, this is mental. This isn't going to work. There's no way audiences are going to go for this. They will reject this acceleration. And it was only when we played it in front of the first preview audience that I realised how thrilling that is, actually, that humans are extreme in their emotions. You know, they do go from uh, euphoria to despair like that. There are good scholarly translations, but there is this thing called the live theatre, which keeps needing new ways of thinking about it and new material. He's writing in the, in the language of everyday life, and I think that what they're the responsibility of the translator is to do is to make sure that it's still been written in the language of everyday life. With all three Ibsen plays that I've done, I've tried to make it speakable, as, as accessible as possible, without making it slangy or, or archaic. So it has a kind of dramatic energy. What I've done is have a literal translation, which is sort of really awkward and un. Speakable English. I have the Dano Norwegian original. I have a, a dictionary, and then I write my version. And I try not to look at a single other version until I've written mine. And I try to understand what Ibsen was after. And I sometimes look at the length of a line and think, actually, in the literal translation. This line is twice as long, and yet he wants something that is, sounds like that. It's very subjective though. You know, one person's version of what a particular set of lines 
means is different from another. So it is my version, but I'm not trying to improve on Ibsen. I'm trying to be as true as possible because I think he was a great writer and because I think his ideas are so original.